The consensus algorithm has been the big innovation from Nakamoto, the Satoshi Nakamoto paper from 2008, the white paper that introduced the first modern application of what we call the blockchain, proposed one consensus algorithm. And there are many, there are as many ways that we can agree on as we can disagree on and notoriously the infinite ways that we can disagree on, <laughs> on things. So there are as many consensus algorithms as well. But they proposed one consensus algorithm uh, in 2008. And why do we need a consensus in the blockchain? Well, we have a block, we have an information record. And then the question is, what else do we write on the block next? Like, how do we decide what to write on the blog? We might disagree on that. So with the consensus algorithm, we agree on what to write. And how do we agree? Well, we vote. And in the words of Nakamoto is, we vote with our CPU power, with the power of our computers. We compute, and that is called proof of work. We compute a lot and we put so much work into it. This is basically seen as a, a deposit you put down that you say like, no, I really, I'm serious. I'm gonna do this right. And when we agree on, we chain the next block to the chain. So that's why it's called a blockchain, a blockchain. So this is the question, how do we write the next block block on it? So Nakamoto, and that is only one consensus algorithm, but the first one proposed to vote with your CPU, with the proof of work. And how that, that works is, I explained that in a previous lecture as well, please check that out. It's basically, you can think about it, it's called the, the mining. It's like I take a little coin and I fly with the airplane over the Rocky Mountains and I drop it somewhere on the airplane. And now the little coin is hidden in the Rocky Mountains. It's a very unique coin, we all know it. But now I say like, hey, take your shovel guys and go out there and look for it. Well, good luck. It's still more likely that you find that than that you find the, ne the next, the right solution for the blockchain. But there you go. And you mine and you really look for this you know, little golden nugget, very unique nugget that you have in the entire Rocky Mountain range. And, and you might find it. Now, it's very difficult to find, but once you have it, it's easy to verify. So let's imagine you found it and you run back and say, I have it, I have it. And we all see and look, and it's like, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. But we say, like, oh no, that's it. Absolutely, there was only one there. I dropped only one from the airplane. So that's what you found. Well, that's what it found. It's, it's the one that we all know. And then you verify it, so it's easy to verify. And then we all like, yeah, that's it. Okay, so you get the honor to write the next block on the blockchain and you get a reward for it. We give you something for it. In that case, you get Bitcoins when you do that. So that's the idea. Now, how does this game work? And actually, we don't fly over the Rocky Mountains and drop nuggets of gold. <laughs> we do a mathematical game. That's what the mining does. And it's not that game that I show you right now, but it's easy to think about it in this way. And it's analogous to some degree. So for example, I have the number 24. And I say, I want to factorize it. The same as I want to multiply some other numbers to get to the number 24. Now, what numbers come to your mind you can multiply to get to the number 24? How can you factorize that? Well, you could say two times 12, right? Yeah, yeah. No, and I was not thinking about that. Think about another one. Well, you could think about three times eight. Yeah, that gives 24, right? But you can think about other ones. You can think about four times six, or you can think about whatever. So I say like, okay, write them all down, write all the possible factorizations of 24 down, and then try to guess what I have in my mind. Well, I have one in mind that starts with a bunch of twos. Nah, not so many, just with two twos. Oh yeah, okay, so that's the right solution. So once you found it, the right solution, then you get the reward. So basically what you do here with computers, you would do it, you would basically enumerate all the different ways you can do that. And the first one who founds the right solution, gets the price. Now we can make that extremely difficult. In the Bitcoin blockchain, it's, it's the difficulty level, it's to such degree that it should be solvable every 10 minutes. And that depends on how many people participate, it depends on the on their computational power that's in there. But you know, we can, we can adjust that. So we can drop a bigger nugget of gold. Imagine we would drop, let's say, a 100 feet nugget of gold in the Rocky Mountains, you probably find that quicker than if I have a one inch nugget of gold hidden in the Rocky Mountains. So we can adjust the speed of how we can solve, how quickly we can solve that problem. And if nobody solves it and nine and a half minutes have passed, we make it a little easier. So that's just how it's set up, but we solve a mathematical problem. Now, how difficult is it to solve this problem? Well, extremely difficult. So we also find in this case, we don't find some kind of solution that has a lot of twos. It usually has to start with a lot of zeros. And I just recently looked it up. Right now, we are here at, you know, we have to find 
20 zeros, I think, at the beginning. You have to find a number with 20 zeros or 19 zeros at the beginning right now in the Bitcoin blockchain. That's what it is. And the chance that you find that is 1 million, 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 million to 1. Well, that's a big, that's a big number. How big is that? Well, if you would drive in a car blindfold and you have a coin in your hand, and you throw it blindfold out of your window and you try to hit a hair that there's outside. Let's say I have a hair one millimeter thin and I hold it outside of the window of your car and you blindfold try to throw the coin and try to hit that one millimeter hair. Well, let's try to play this game. And that's a little bit more difficult than that because the car is not still. So I have this hair posted on the way, but you are driving and you're driving with 80 miles an hour, 130 kilometers an hour. So let's imagine you drive, uh, the largest distance I found was from Hong Kong to Lisbon. You drive 9,000 miles. That's three times driving from the East Coast to West Coast in the United States. And you can probably do that once a week if you drive 16 hours a day. So you sleep eight hours and the rest you drive. And then you can drive that once a week, right? You drive with 130 kilometers an hour, 80 miles an hour, once a week there. And I hit, have the hair hidden once. And you get once the chance to throw that coin out and if you're lucky, you hit the hair. But who knows where to throw it out? Maybe when you pass by Rome or when you pass by Istanbul. I don't know where you pass by. You know, at what point are you going to throw that hair out? Now, actually, it's not you drive that once or twice. You drive that for 1.6 trillion years once a week. At once, once a week, yes. And you throw the coin out only once. Or you drive 8 million times since the first modern human came about 200,000 years ago. Or you drive 116 times since the Big Bang. <laughs> so since the Big Bang, you drive 160 times back and forth between Lisbon and Hong Kong, and you only get one chance to blindfold it, throw the coin out of the window and hit that hair. That's the likelihood of finding the right hash value to get the honor to put the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain. Now that is very unlikely that you're lucky. Not impossible. You know, that's when mathematicians say the word like impractical or infeasible, or they say in theory. And he's like, oh, no, it's still a theory. Well, listen, for, when mathematicians say that for all practical purposes, it's impossible. But let's don't use the word because you might be very lucky. You might drive there since the Big Bang 116 times and hit that hair blindfolded. Good for you. But it's you, you know what I mean. So we actually adjust the difficulty level on this blockchain to make it work, actually, for somebody to solve it at least like once every 10 minutes or so. Thank you very much. So that's what we do. So doing these calculations is certainly very energy intensive. I mean, like going out in the Rocky Mountains with all these people, like many people try to solve this puzzle, trying to find this number with all the zeros uh, that it starts with. And so for the 10 minutes, a lot of CPUs, a lot of computers are running, of different computers, doesn't have to be CPUs nowadays, and tries to solve this problem. And same as it takes a lot of energy to, if a lot of people run into the Rocky Mountains looking for a nugget of gold, you need a lot of food and, 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 and water for that. You also need a lot of electricity to run all these computers mining for the next solution there. And you can critique that, but this mechanism that Nakamoto came up with is the most secure mechanism we have come up with yet. There are others, and I'm gonna mention a second one now, but until now, proof of work is really like nobody ha has ever fussed with that. Like we can, it's, not, it's not breakable. So that's a good thing. And you could argue if it's worth it to have Bitcoin wasting so much energy. Well, yeah, we waste energy on a lot of things. YouTube, according to the numbers I saw, uses twice as much energy than the Bitcoin network. So what does YouTube do? I mean, I love my YouTube videos, but Bitcoin provides a global property solution uh, to people who usually don't have a property. So you might argue argue in favor of that. Or gold mining, like real gold mining, like real gold mining uses twice the energy than Bitcoin mining uses. So what value does gold have? So people are arguing Bitcoin is half than gold and half is YouTube. Well, all right, that's, that's, that's still okay, some might say. But still, it's a lot of energy expenditure. It's really bulletproof. So that's why people really still like it and we still use it, Bitcoin. But the alternatives. And one alternative is called proof of stake. 
The second biggest cryptocurrency, Ethereum, the second biggest blockchain for that matter, because cryptocurrencies as for now, Ethereum has started out as proof of work, very energy intensive, and then in 2022 has migrated to proof of stake. And proof of stake uses much less energy. And how can you think about that? Okay, the question is again, who gets the honor to write the next block on the blockchain? Now, how do we solve that? We can all do a lot of work and then have our sweat equity in it. Or what they say is, well, you just put the stakes in the middle of the table, right? You like your poker chips, you put them in the middle of the table and then we'll see, like if you put your money where your mouth is. And if we all validate you, we all, these are called validators, then we validate you and we see what you do. And if you mess up, then we're gonna burn your chips, basically. We're gonna slash them, that's a technical term. And you lose all your chips. Now, if you don't put enough chips on the table, we're not even gonna start with giving you a chance for that. So there's a randomness, not, not the one who puts the most chip gets the next take uh, automatically. There's a randomness involved. But if you wanna play that game, you need a lot of chips, you need a lot of stakes. So people create staking pools. And that's where the famous staking comes in. When you stake your cryptocurrency, you give it to somebody who plays the stake. You better watch out who you give your, your, your cryptocurrency to stake because they might gamble with it and, and not do the right thing and then it gets slashed and your, your stake cryptocurrency will be burned. So that's another story. But that's the idea. You basically put a big deposit down. You put a big deposit down and say like, hey, trust me, guys, and you can have the deposit if I'm lying. And well, then we validate you. And in that, Ethereum migrated down to, to a small percentage. Can you see that here? So this is a Bitcoin, how much energy it uses. This is Ethereum before, and then it migrated. I hopefully you can see this down here. And it decreased in 2022 by 99.95%. So it uses now a fraction of what even PayPal uses. So yeah, then you can think, but Ethereum is, is, is much more flexible than PayPal and uses a fraction of the energy. So just to be clear. And that was a really big engineering piece. I actually, uh, I stayed awake that night because I watched it. Well, for the nerds of us, this, these things are very, these things are very exciting because the Ethereum blockchain is decentralized, right? So you cannot stop it. There's nobody really in charge of it. It's just running. It's like, imagine it's a big fleet of airplanes flying in the air at full speed and you exchange the engine while they are flying. And it, uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing piece of engineering orchestrated collectively. And they got it done. Really pulling my head. It was, it was uh, cool. I think it took two nights for them to do it. It called the merge and they transitioned it from proof of work to proof of stake. It was an amazing piece of engineering. And so here we call them validators. So we put the chips in the middle and we validate you. So in, in proof of work, we call them miners and here we call them validators. Now there are many more ways of creating consensus. As I always say, there is many ways to agree as to disagree, and there are many ways to disagree. So another consensus algorithms are out there, but these are the two most important ones.